In this video, I'm going to start discussing the WKB approximation. And so this is an approximation method used when we have a slowly varying potential. So if our potential here is varying more slowly than the length of the wavelength for our wave function here. And so this video, I'll be talking about how we do this for the classically allowed region, which is when we have our, our energy greater than the potential. So when the energy of the, uh, of the particle is greater than the potential. And so that looks something like this. So it's not exactly like this. This isn't uh, an actual wave function solution here, but just an illustration. So we have here the blue line is like our slowly varying potential. We can see it's sort of uh, angled upward a little bit, but it's varying a lot more slowly than the, the uh, wave function or the length of the wavelength here. And so uh, the WKB approximation is essentially that it's, uh, you know, basically uh, zero there. Uh, in the next video, we'll be talking about the, uh, the uh, place where we have the, the potential greater than our energy. And so in that case, we have a solution that looks like this, where the uh, main thing to notice is one that it, it does not have the, the imaginary component there in the exponent like we do in this part here. And that is because uh, we are going to have an exponential decay when we are in a place where the potential is greater than the energy. So the, the uh, wave function will just uh, decay and become, go to zero out when we are in a potential greater than the energy of the particle. And the other thing to notice, so here we have uh, the energy minus the potential, and here it's the potential minus the energy. Uh, but uh, where this will become difficult is when we have the energy approximately equal to the potential. Uh, but that is something that I will be talking about in a couple of videos from now. Uh, and so the reason for this, though, is because we have uh, E minus V equals zero, or similarly, V minus E equals zero, which means that our K here, or kappa, when we are uh, in the potential greater than the energy, will be zero. And so when we uh, calculate the wavelength like this, we are dividing by zero. And so uh, that will give us uh, issues there. And so there are some things that we will do to try to patch together uh, the wave function uh, when we are in the sort of classically allowed region, which is where the potential is less than the energy uh, and where the potential is greater than the energy around it. And so we have these uh, places Places here which are called turning points, which are when the uh, energy of the particle and the potential are roughly equal to each other. But like I said, we will, uh, we will look at how to solve for this in a future video. For now, we will focus on this classically allowed region. And so we have our Schrodinger equation here, which can be rewritten in terms of the momentum here. Uh, and so uh, we kind of go through this using that our energy is equal to one half mv squared plus our potential here, and that the momentum is equal to mv. And so we will end up with our momentum being this right here. And so our our uh, Schrodinger equation then becomes that right there. So the second derivative of the wave function being equal to the negative uh, momentum over squared over h bar squared uh, multiplied by our wave function there. And so this means that our momentum here is the magnitude of the momentum for a particle with energy E uh, and potential energy uh, V here, where we, uh, I, I'm putting the potential here as a function of X, because remember, we're thinking about a potential that varies with X. So it's, it's a slowly varying potential. And so again, assuming we, uh, the 
uh, energy of the particle greater than the potential here. So we're in that classically allowed region. We, uh, the momentum here will be real for all x between 0 and a. So 0 and the place between 0 and a being where the energy of our particle is greater than the potential energy. And so the particle would be confined to that 0 and a there. So uh, our wave function will have this form here. So we see that uh, we have this varying amplitude here and this varying phase here. And so when we take the, uh, the second derivative, so remember we're doing this second derivative here. So this right here is the first derivative and this right here is the second derivative uh, of this, <coughs> of the wave function with respect to x here. Uh, so uh, we can then drop this x here just to make it simpler and using primes for the derivatives to sort of clear up this notation. Uh, we will be able to cancel this e to the i phi x on both sides uh, because remember we will have the uh, e to the i phi x on this side and on this side right here so we can cancel those and we end up with this right here so I have the blue or the real parts in blue and then the imaginary parts here in red and so the real part will end up looking like this right here so we have this second derivative like that the imaginary part which is a we can uh, have as a real function and so uh, we uh, have this right here we sort of do a reverse product rule and we end up with this right here and so this one can actually be solved fairly easily so uh, we end up with this right here uh, and so that is the solution for the imaginary part. <clears throat> but now we have the uh, the real part here. And so we can make this WKB approximation. So this is sort of where that WKB approximation comes in, which is that the, uh, the amplitude here varies slowly with X. And so we can therefore have the second derivative here be equal to zero and so that gives us this right here and so we can solve for that and so we have the derivative of our uh, our, our phi here which is our uh, phase being equal to plus or minus the momentum over h bar and so to get rid of the fact that this is a derivative we take the integral of both sides here and so we end up with this uh, so we have our plus c here but we uh, now have this integral right here for our phi of x and so we have our two functions remember the a of x and our phi of x in this which is the form of our solution here. Uh, we therefore have these two here for our a of x and for our phi of x. So the a of x is what we got up here and the phi of x is what we got right here. And so we have this uh, plus c here, but we can just absorb that into this big c right here. And so uh, we can just sort of get rid of that. And so we end up with this right here. Uh, and so then this uh, this uh, derivative of phi here, remember, we, uh, we found that that was equal to this right here. And so we just change that into our our uh, integral right there. We have our integral up here in the exponent because that was our phi up there. And so the we have the uh, the derivative with respect to x of our integral uh, taken over x here, which will just end up being this one over h bar of our momentum here. And then we can absorb this one over h bar. Uh, this one over h bar uh, square root here into our c again since that c is just some constant as is the one over h bar and so that ends up giving us this so this is the uh, the form of our our wave function solution right here and so if we apply Born's rule which remember is just squaring the wave function uh, we will end up squaring the wave function squaring our c here squaring our square root of the momentum there this 
right here, these two uh, exponentials will just become one because we are multiplying the plus with the negative uh, and the negative with the plus here, which uh, is, you know, uh, the plus is uh, just sort of uh, in the numerator, and the negative is just sort of putting it in the denominator. So they're just canceling out, and it becomes 1. So we have this right here. So this is telling us the probability of finding the particle is inversely proportional to the momentum. So that's in the denominator there. And so if we think about this classically, that sort of makes sense, because remember, the momentum is equal to mv, and so it's proportional to the velocity. And so uh, a, a particle, at least classically thinking, uh, where its velocity is highest is where we're going to find it least often. It's going to spend less time in the places where its velocity is highest. And so it will be detected there less often. And so our wave function will look something similar to this. Again, this isn't uh, like an exact uh, this isn't like the, the wave function here exactly. This is just an illustration. So we see the blue line here is uh, is analogous to our, our potential there. And then this red line here is analogous to our wave function. So we see that the amplitude and the phase uh, or the, the amplitude is greater and the wavelength is is greater uh, over here where the potential is lowest and then it sort of uh, shrinks down as we get uh, to the higher potential. All right, so say we have uh, an infinite well with this bumpy bottom. So it's it's like it's sort of like the infinite square well, but our potential is not zero, and it is uh, slightly bumpy there on the bottom. But it is is infinity on either side right here. Uh, then the wave function solution will look like this. So uh, with these exponentials, but if we get it uh, in terms of the sine and cosine function we will have it looking like that. Uh, and so because these are infinite, this is infinite on either side, we will need that the uh, wave function at zero right here is equal to zero. And so this will have to be zero right here, which means our C sub two here is equal to zero. Because remember, cosine is uh, not zero at uh, cosine of zero. And so we will need that this is equal to zero, this uh, constant right here. And we will need that th at a, this is also zero. And so we will need that our sine of the uh, phi of a here is equal to sine of n times pi. So it will need to be uh, for these integer multiples of pi here. And so since our phi of x is equal to this integral here, so we're going between 0 and a, we will need that the integral of our, uh, of our momentum here uh, taken over x here is equal to n pi h bar. Uh, so we have this h bar, uh, this 1 over h bar here. So when we set this equal to the n, uh, the n pi, we just multiply both sides by h bar. And so we end up with this right here. Uh, and this gives us the approximate allowed energies. Uh, so we can see that if we had v of x uh, equals zero. So if we did have this down at zero, and we used uh, this solution here, we would have our momentum being equal to this 2me, the square root of 2me here, which is a constant. So we can bring it out in front of the integral here. Uh, then we take the integral uh, between zero and a, so our d of x, when we take the integral of that, will just become x. Then we evaluate it at zero, at a and 0. Uh, so the 0 will just drop out because x equals 0 is just 0. Uh, then we have our 
momentum times a right here. So we have our momentum times a equals n pi h bar. Uh, we substitute this in for our momentum here. And so we uh, just do some algebraic manipulation and we end up with this for our energy, which is just the formula for the energy levels of the infinite square well, which, uh, you know, is what we found when we just uh, assumed that the v of x here, our, our potential was equal to zero. Uh, but uh, we could see that um, if we did this where we didn't assume this, then we uh, could still find solutions for this that were approximate to the actual solutions. Uh, but anyway, again, this was looking at the uh, classically allowed region here where our our potential was less than our energy. Uh, in the next video, we will look at what happens when we are uh, at the potential greater than the energy uh, on either side here. Uh, then in the video after that, uh, is where we will actually get to where our E is approximately equal to the potential here. And what we'll have to do is essentially take the solutions for the classically allowed region and then these uh, sort of uh, classically unallowed regions here and sort of try to patch them together at these points here. And so you will we'll see in that video that we actually call those the uh, the patching regions there. And so we want to take our two solutions and do something to patch them together. Uh, but we will get to that uh, when uh, in a couple videos from now. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.